Hey everybody, welcome back to Red Liberty Media. We have again joining us Arden Young. Arden, thank you for coming back on the show. Thank you so much for having me again. Yeah, you guys just dropped a second Pornhub video and this is even worse than the first. Tell us exactly what we're looking at. Yeah, so we have Mike Farley again, who is an executive at Pornhub. He's a product manager. <clears throat> He's been there for over 10 years. We also have Dylan Rice, a senior script writer at the parent company MindGeek, who's been there for about six years. And they're talking about content moderation failures on Pornhub's part. They say, you know, the system is so slow, <clears throat> there's not enough moderators, it stays up for a long time, people get mad and sue them. Um, how do you get somebody to prove they're above age? We don't have consent of that person, we're running ads. As a business, they're monetizing content, they don't know where it comes from, they don't know who's on the video, they don't know how old they are. They said we weren't compliant. And um, they talk about how the profits matter above all else internally. Again, like in part one, it's always about profits. And they say that they were on top of the world before the 2020 scandal happened. And they fumbled so hard because they didn't take that money and reinvest it in moderation or quality of the site. And they just gave it all to executives. Why would they invest in moderation when they built all their money without moderating it? They have no incentive to do it. I mean, there, there's no laws. Uh, I mean, there are laws, but there's no, no one enforcing these laws to make them moderate these things. And as far as, you know, Dylan talks about moderation failures. Exactly what exactly is he talking about? I know it's also, you know, the underage. You can't verify how old someone is in the video, but what if somebody has porn and they just don't want that up on the site anymore? Yeah, there could very well be a revenge porn angle to this. Maybe <clears throat> someone was filmed without their consent, uh, even as an adult, that's completely illegal. Uh, maybe someone was actually filmed with their consent, but uh, they didn't consent for it to be circulated or monetized. That's also still illegal. Um, there's so much that could go wrong with all of this. And, you know, Farley says we didn't give an SHIT. We weren't taking it seriously. Um, so you get a peek into the internal attitude that uh, Pornhub yeah. had. Yeah. And Dylan Rice, this, the second guy in the video, he's the senior script writer for Pornhub. Yeah, he writes, uh, he doesn't work directly with Pornhub. He works for their parent company, MindGeek, now rebranded to ALO. And he writes pornographic scripts for their pay sites. So sites like Trans Angels, um, some of the, I believe, gay sites. And he might also work with browsers. Holy moly. So it just goes to show you that porn is not real. Uh, these people aren't screened. They're actors. They're not enjoying this stuff. They're not uh, saying, I want to grow up and be a porn star. No one really says that. And right. wh why does, you know, I was watching the video. Why does Pornhub view official and legal porn as competition? I think Dylan Rice was talking about that. Yeah. So there's something called the 2257. And you legally, as a traditional porn company, have to verify the age and consent of every single person in a pornographic video uh, that you're going to circulate. So obviously with the pay sites, um, they are, they seem to be following that. They seem to be, uh, that's kind of their MO, which, you know, it's positive. Um, but with Pornhub, since it's a tube site, users upload, they're not doing that. So MindGeek, the parent company, is viewing these pay sites with the 2257s as competition of the tube sites, Pornhub. Um, and so that's why Pornhub doesn't want to comply with the 2257 code because they want this, you know, competition and to make as much yeah. money as possible. Yeah. It would cut into their profits to use actual for lack of a better term, official porn actors, because they would have to pay them to be on the site. Is that correct? Yeah, and there would just be less porn. Um, that's, you know, a fact. And 
I think I think that there is an appetite for homemade porn as nasty as it sounds to say. I think that there is a I think they know that their demand will go down if they're only putting out like very production house made pornography. Oh my gosh. And you know, at the end of the video, Mike says that he believes that there's still underage videos circulating on Pornhub. Mm -hmm. And the Pornhub basically doesn't care about these because you mentioned also that there was a 14 year old uh, girl who had videos of her put up on Pornhub and she would email Pornhub. They would take it down after, you know, it wasn't a priority for them. And then someone would re upload the video. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, she tried to get in contact with Pornhub for years to take her videos down, but they ignored it. And when finally, there was a bunch of victims doing this at the same time. And when one video would get taken down, it would get uploaded faster than anyone was able to keep up with like 10 times over. So um, it's a really unsafe platform yeah. and no one is really safe. You know, there, there's minors on the platform, of course, but it's also adults who have perhaps been date raped uh, and, and things of that nature. And there's so much current litigation going on. I think in the last eight years so far, it's 195 victims have sued Pornhub for one wow. thing or another. Uh, and there's a lot of current litigation going on. Holy cow. Um, you know, I find it very interesting that Pornhub can't input like an algorithm that says, you know, if I don't know, they have to put some kind of algorithm in like we have, I mean, you were just locked out of your Twitter because of what was posted, right? Yeah, I was, um, I was locked out of my Twitter Arden underscore young underscore and the story part one was deleted off of Twitter and I wasn't allowed back in unless I acknowledged that. Um, luckily, I was let back in. Uh, I believe someone on you know the free speech side of thing inside Twitter fixed the issue. But then again, I was locked out of the sound investigations Twitter. Sure. So that I think publishing our content, our stories on social media is gonna be a huge issue. You know, I think it's really ironic that Twitter and these social media platforms are censoring our story about illegal content being on Pornhub, while the illegal content itself on Pornhub isn't being addressed. Yeah, it's very ironic. And, uh, you know, it, it's very interesting also because apparently you, you have to think about it which person at X or Twitter decides that, hey, this content, this user needs to be locked out of their platform unless uh, Pornhub calls in a favor or something like that. Right. I imagine it's relatively subjective. And while I do believe Elon Musk uh, does stand for free speech from what I've seen, obviously he doesn't control it everything he doesn't have time right. to he can't look at everything so i'm sure there are employees who are left up to their own judgment and may not like the story and want it out there or who knows maybe someone does have friends at pornhub somewhere yeah and that is my my kind of final question is how far up does all this go i mean you have child content on pornhub underage content on Pornhub and the, 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 the statistics show us that it's increasing. How far up does this go? I wish I knew. I want to find out and I hope to, um, but that remains to be seen. Pornhub obviously has a ton of power, a ton of money, and a ton of influence. MindGeek slash ALO, their parent company, own all kinds of companies that we don't even know the extent of. Uh, they have other porn sites, they have uh, porn production, they have VPNs, they have other types of companies that <clears throat> they don't disclose publicly. 
So we have yet to find out, and I hope we do. Um, another ironic thing I wanted to point out is uh, Mike Farley's name is actually a restricted search term on Pornhub now. So you cannot, so they're trying to prevent people from uploading our story to the Pornhub platform. Oh, wow. um, and that goes to show how hypocritical it is. While they still have this loophole gaping wide open, allowing illegal content through, they don't want people to be able to view or upload our story. Yeah, well, I think you guys are the tip of the spear right now. And I think, who knows, you guys could be David Stone that takes down Goliath. It's huge. But I think you guys are being uh, extremely brave, and it's awesome to see what you guys are doing. Is there anything else that you want to say before we sign off? Thank you, Timothy. Um, if you want to keep up with us, and hopefully without the censorship, we are on Telegram at Sound Investigations, and you can go to soundinvestigations.com to see everything we post as well. Awesome. And then your Twitter uh, that you got locked out of, how do people follow you there? Yeah, it's Arden underscore Young underscore, and hopefully we won't have any more issues, and I'll stay. I'll have access to my account going forward. Yeah, who knows? We're just called to be to do the right thing, no matter the results. And who knows? This could be an unraveling of a new Epstein thing. Never know. You never know. Arden, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Timothy.